Hi guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. Uh, we're watching, uh, well today we're going to watch right now an Idiot Abroad Season 2 Episode 5 Meet a Gorilla. Carl's always liked monkeys until, you know, they stole his chips a couple, uh, a couple episodes ago. And then, you know, he didn't really care for them too much. <laughs> They stole everything. They stole his sunglasses, uh, everything, anything they could get their hands on, you know, <laughs> gone. Uh, so, I don't know how he's going to feel about a gorilla. A gorilla is, you know, pretty big. A lot bigger than those little monkeys that were jumping all over him. Don't want no gorilla jumping on you. Um, the last episode we watched was, uh, he was in, um, sorry, he was, he was in Alaska. Not much to do in Alaska except shiver. <laughs> but he found some stuff to do. Uh, he went on a nature hike with uh, that guy there. I don't forget his name. I liked his song. He had a good song. <laughs> anyway, Carl got uh, the deep freeze. He's, well, turned his testicles to icicles. Uh, and then, you know, he went out cleaning up those, what do you call them, honey pots? Honey pot? Honey... Honey buckets. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that didn't look like a lot of fun. But, you know, it's something that, that gets done. You know, places like that don't have, you know, plumbing. Well, apparently now they do, but not, not, uh, not, it's not a common thing or it's not, you know, something, you know, the honey buckets seem to work well for a long time. So they just tradition, I guess, continue on. Uh, so we're anyway, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna continue on with this one. This one is Meet a Gorilla. Let's watch. The Bucket List. See the glaciers before they melt. Go on an African safari. Encounter the world's largest mammal. The ultimate things to do before you die. Or are they? If I was on my deathbed, there's no way I'd want to be climbing Kilimanjaro. It's not things to do a few <laughs> minutes before you die. It's things to do in your life. <laughs> it's difficult. He was so suspicious after the last time. <laughs> Here we go! <laughs> We've told him that he gets to choose from the list whatever he wants to do. It's like Romeo and Juliet. But that doesn't mean that there won't be a few treats in store that he's not expecting. <laughs> this is a man who's reluctant. This is a man who doesn't want to do these things. Uh, no. No. It's making <laughs> Carl do things that other people want to do before they die. Yeah, exactly, yeah. This isn't his list. <laughs> 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 Look at this one. Come face to face with mountain gorillas in their natural habitat. What a privilege that is. One of the most endangered species on the planet. One of our closest living relatives. 98% genetically identical to a human, a gorilla. Even more similar to you. What an amazing <laughs> privilege that is. I'd like to see one. I've seen them, seen them in the zoo. Right. And they do impress me. Why do they impress you? How do they impress you? They're just, um, just, just very human in the eyes. I, I think that would be such a meeting of minds when you come <laughs> face to face with a mountain gorilla in its natural habitat. Both just there. Both nude amongst the foliage. <laughs> I wouldn't be nude again. What is it with you and nude? They don't like clothes. And you are hairy all over. And I think you've got more chance of them seeing similarities. Not wandering about in a, in a, like the woods, looking for apes, nude. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a point when that woods ends and then suddenly one creeps out and you've got me legging it. Nude. <laughs> nude. <laughs> Hello, Carl, mate, Steve here. Now, I know the gorillas you're going to see are in Uganda, but Uganda. before you, you head over there, we wanted you to just explore a bit more of Africa. So we're going to start you off in South Africa. Okay, so he's going to Africa. There's a couple of projects there we want you to, to take part in. There's a chap called Sipo, okay, he runs one of the local charities. Um, we've arranged for you to, to teach some local kids, build some huts. You've got a chance here to give something back, literally get your hands dirty. All right, mate? Just for charity. 
I, I mean, has it got worse? Is it me, as I've got older, does it seem like there's more and more stuff we've got to give to? When I was a kid, all I ever saw was like that kid wearing calipers outside a, a supermarket. It was like a, an iron model of a girl with calipers on her legs and a built-up shoe. And you, you put like 20p in it or whatever. That's what, that, was, that was being hassled for charity. Now you can't walk down the street without someone going, I need your help. <laughs> I think these people are sick and tired of people coming in from England Jeez. with a camera crew. That's probably why they've not moved on. They probably want to build new houses and all that. They can't. They haven't got time. Crews keep turning up. If it's not Geldof, it's that Richard Curtis bloke <laughs> or Lenny Henry cropping up. They can't get anything done. I know who Bob Geldof Super. is. Hey, Carl. How's it? Yeah, I'm all Good right. Hey, Good. Not too bad, not too yeah. bad. Mm, Carl, welcome to Deep Snow. Let's go for it. So we can run. All right, who's the man in the back? It's your security. I need security. Yeah. I'm Carl. How are you doing? Just a normal handshake. How many kids will I be teaching? How many can you handle? Twelve. Twelve? Is that, are you happy with that? Not really. <laughs> that's trouble with charity, isn't it? It's never enough. I mean, you just dropped me in here. Everything's a bit of a shock to the system. But I've got a bodyguard. He's still with me. I'm in a primary school. How dangerous <laughs> is this place? <laughs> By sending me in to teach the local kids here, I, I think it's more of a hindrance. I know nothing. <laughs> I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. Why don't you talk about some of the places you've been? Yeah, but if I start going, yes, well, well, kids, um, China. They haven't got doors on the shitters. I go, well, we haven't. <laughs> you've seen where they're living. What can I teach him? <laughs> the children have chosen the topic, by the way. What is it? You're going to talk about risk. Risk? Mm -hmm. Risk in general. You can just say to them whatever you think and whatever you know about risk. Afternoon, everyone. How are you? <laughs> OK, risk. Right, stop messing about the back. Right, will we shut the door, please? Because that's also very risky, leaving the door open. Thank you very much. Um, what do you think risk is? <coughs> mm. Mm. Right. <laughs> See, it's tough, this. Does anyone have any risks in the life here today? Yeah, yeah of course you can. Um, teenagers fall pregnant. Is that a risk? How, how old is she to be worrying about that? Teenage. 13. I didn't worry about people having kids when I was 13. Do they honestly want to know about risk? Yes. In sex? Yes. In sex. You understand that? That's what we're talking about here? Yes. Honestly, I thought I was coming in to talk about Umpty Dumpty. Right, OK, here you go. The thing is... <laughs> I haven't got kids, just so you know. I'm 30... 38 now. I haven't got any children. So why do you not have a kid? Because of you are old. I'm old? <laughs> yes. It means you don't have a wife. No, I have. I've got a girlfriend. For 17 years. Oh, 17 years. No, she's not 17. <laughs> I've been with her for 17 years. <laughs> All right? OK. Don't rush into having kids. What you should do, focus on getting a job. Meet a woman, meet a man. Have a good time for a bit, but be careful. Wear a condom. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Right, I've covered that. What else do you want to know? You cut your hair, you? Mm -hmm. No, it's not cut. This isn't a style. I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't how I, I don't say, can you just take that bit off and leave that? <laughs> do you want to play on a bike? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> beep, beep. This is a risk. That's risky. Never do that. Never do it one-handed. Never do that. <laughs> I learned from Ricky Javier that you are good in DIY. 
I'm so I'm looking for the guy for DIY. I'm your man. So you can do it. Geldof. He did a lot, didn't he? He, was, he got involved in all this in the 80s, and he's got sick of it. He's moved on. I don't hear about him coming here anymore because you feel like, how, what can you do? What can you do? How can you sort this out? You're going to break down a house and rebuild it from scratch. Is this just water or is that...? Uh... Everything that you're not thinking of. We we'll need to meet the family first. Carl. How are you doing? Hello. Do that and that. Little fella. Hello. Hello. This is where it starts. Give loads to charity. Helping old people. Deaf kids. Save the kids. <laughs> if anything, I'd say I'm single-handedly causing the world's population problem, because I'm saving everyone. I'm like Superman. Sure, we got the right house. <laughs> Quite happy helping out. I help anyone out. Someone needs a bit of help. But me turning up for one day, doing a bit of DIY, is that really going to sort this out? It's going to take forever. Look how many need to be replaced. 600,000 people live here, he said. Apparently, the rules are you're meant to build your own. But the people we're helping today are ill, so they need help to build their house. I don't know where they went. I sort of shook their hand and said, I'm going to build your house. They disappeared. Got out for the day. He's been, he's been lying on a bed in the corner there, just... Has he? Can you imagine being ill and then someone coming out and knocking your house down? Well, hang on a minute. Just leave me, let me be. I want peace and quiet. He's got the builders in making the right racket. The right balls up for that one. Not the greatest view, is it? All right, I've done it. Uh, uh. Steve, it's Carl. Do you do that sort of charity work? Yeah, I got it done. I got the hook done. But there's about another six hundred thousand to do. So I, I don't quite understand what I was meant to get out of it. All you're doing is you're just helping others because that's a good and honourable thing to do. Yeah, but I do that when I get back. I'm going to show you my bank statement. And you'll see all this stuff flying out, left, right and centre. <laughs> helping all these other charities. But Carl, don't you understand the difference between a little bit of money dribbling out of your account once a month and actually getting down there with your hands dirty? Right. When, 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 was, when was the last time you were over here, Steve, getting your hands dirty? When were you... When, I, I can't remember you saying. <laughs> when, when were you here again? I'm asking you because you know. You're on the ground floor. What I've done, I've built a nice new shiny hut where the old hut was. There's still a river of shit whizzing past it. Do you know what, mate? You are right. You changed my mind, Carl. All these years I've been thinking it was good to help other people. But do you know what? Talking to you for two minutes on this phone, I realised, no, Carl is absolutely bloody right. I've cancelled all of my standing orders. Forget it. No, I'm not saying that. What have I been saying? I'm just telling you what I've seen with my own eyes. What more can I do? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just a bit of frustration. And I just feel that just because I build one hut, it's not enough. Here's something. Do you know I had an argument with him once over 50 pence? If we're talking about Steve and money, 50 pence. I got some coffees, walked over, he said, where's my change? I said, oh, it's in my pocket. Oh, that's mine. And we had a big, honestly, not messing about, a big full-on blown argument over 50 pence. <laughs> That's the reality, but he won't let that in. He'll go cut that out. 50 pence! <laughs> I got a text from Steve this morning just saying that he wants me to meet up with Seco again, that charity bloke, to uh, take part in some local activity. I don't know what it is. That's, that's all he said. Welcome to Soweto Schooling Towers. Very iconic. And you look at the middle, the bungee jumping. <laughs> it's a bungee. <laughs> what, what's, what's, the, what's the thinking? <laughs> We've done this. We've done it. When you I didn't do Zealand, it. Didn't do it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's, oh, <laughs> I'm not doing it.
Let's go and have a look, mate. There's a really lovely view of Soweto up there. And I know you're game. Just go up there and have a look, see the township. Oh, there you are. Push. Right off the edge. <laughs> no, nobody will push you. I'm going to do this. It's crazy. How's it going? Um, I'm, I'm a bit pissed off because I'm on the edge of a bungee again. Yeah, I think you'll feel really good about yourself if you have one more chance and you do it this time. Yeah, Carl, I'll do it, man. Is he going to jump? Oh, God almighty. Yeah. It's pointless. It's pointless. I don't want to do it. If people want to do it, then great, but there's no reason for me to do this. There's no big payoff. Oh, what if I gave you a reason? OK, if you jump, I'll buy a hut for someone. Oh. How much are they? The 500 quid. Do you know what? I'd rather I'd rather pay the 500 quid out of my own money than to do this jump. I'll raise you. I'll, I'll buy two huts if you jump then. Where's this going to end then? He's got more money than me. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'll pay the grand. Let's leave it three, there. Three huts. For fuck's sake. Three huts. <laughs> You're making me look a right twat here. No, I'm not. You <laughs> are, because I don't want to do it. I'll pay that. I'll pay that. This is my last offer, OK? I'll buy five huts. <laughs> if you jump, you've bought five huts, basically, and you feel good about yourself, and you've made me look a twat. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. So you're going to do it, right? Look at you. Hmm? You're going to do it, aren't you? You're going to do it. All the work yesterday, has that gone out the window? I built a hut yesterday. You should be over the moon about that. It's good, man. It's not so bad. As you can see my face, I'm happy, man. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, uh. <laughs> 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 what happened? Forget it. Forget <laughs> it. Do it like that. Oh, come on, Dreams Carl. I have to do it like that. As if I would be. It's a definite no, honestly. Not for me. Let's leave it as that. Ah. Uh. If I tell Ricky I didn't do it, are they going to keep doing this? Are they going to set something up again whilst I'm here? I'm just thinking, give them a call, say, yeah, I did it. All right. All right, how's it going? How was it? Mental. <laughs> did you do it? You yeah. jumped? Yeah. Well, I had to, didn't I? So, uh, yeah. Well done. Were you, were you scared, though? No, not really. I just, you know, it was on things. It just was focused. I just thought, I've got to do it. Let's get on with it. I just was like, right, it's a tape roll, and I'm doing this. Bang, done, bosh. Get these five huts. Let's get these people happy here. They were over the moon. Oh, well done. Tell Steve, yeah? Just let him know, because he was having a go at me yesterday and all that. I'm sick of it. So just say, Carl yeah. did it. He's raised the money. We've got the five huts. Everyone's happy. I would, I would ask Steve to chip in, but do you think there's any point? Well, pointless. I said that. Okay. Because you did it, um, I've arranged a caravan for a little treat because I know how much you like them. Um, so, not only have they got their huts and you feel brilliant, but um, you can uh, stay in a caravan now. That's all right. I'm happy with that. No, I know it's not right to do that, but he's shut him up now, hasn't it? <laughs> That's the end of it. I've done a bungee, as far as he's concerned. Ricky's happy. Kids have got the huts. I'm happy. I've got my caravan. So it's a, it's a nice lie, isn't it? It's not an evil one. Well, now I can go where I want to go, can't I? Stay where I want to stay. So I'm thinking of stopping off yeah. at a place where uh, a couple have got a hippo as a pet. Oh, Tony, God, please to meet you. Tony, please to meet you. Welcome here. Oh, it's mad, isn't it? I saw it on the internet. There's loads of clips. Just wandering about the front room. It's mental. <laughs> Quite fancy getting a pet. But it's just that thing of airs going everywhere. I suppose that's a good thing with a hippo. You don't get airs on the sofa. It's bloody massive, isn't she? When she comes out of the water. Oh my God, it's letting its own. <laughs> that is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. <laughs> Fucking hippo in here. <laughs> oh, 
It can't get through there, can it? No. No. Would you like to feed her beans? You don't have to throw it in. She's calm, she's relaxed. There you go. Wonderful. That was excellent. Oh, <laughs> what a lovely little baby. It's not little. Mm. Donkey Jess. Thank you, Jessica. Donkey Jess. Donkey Jess. One more. Oh, I'll keep messing. I'm making a right mess of your kitchen. I think you've got a hippo in it. Mm. <laughs> it's like Suzanne from the back. Looks like Suzanne. <laughs> Do you have insurance? So if it knock your plasma over, are you covered? No. Oh. It's like some sort of mad dream or a cartoon. When you think about what I've been put through, and this is the maddest thing I've seen in 38 years. Every night, she has a aromatherapy body massage. What it makes me realise is, is that I'm quite lucky with Suzanne. She asked for a cat, she's asked for a dog. I've gone, no, we haven't got the space. Shirley's got a hippo. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's half eight on a Sunday morning. Jesus Christ. You can't be lying in bed all the time, right? There's charity stuff that needs sorting out. Sipo's been calling me, the guy, you know, who does the charity stuff, raising money for the huts. Have you paid it yet? Hello? Oh, what do you want? I'm just calling up, just letting you know I'm having a good time. Just uh, just had a little shower, had some breakfast, sat here with a hippo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly. I'd say if you're seeing animals, this is the best way to see it. In someone's house, have a cup of tea if you want it. Biscuits on, on the go. Just sat here now. It's well happy. Is it happy, though? What do you mean? Of course it's happy. It doesn't just live in a house, though, does it? No, it wanders off, wanders in, watches a bit of telly. Wild animals should be in the wild, Carl. Whatever. Right? I mean, don't be worrying. I'm off to see the gorillas. I'm not going to bring one home. <laughs> Sipo again. Hiya, Carl. The money still hasn't transferred into our account. Give it a chance. Ricky tells me you're up near Jessica the Hippo and there's a township that could do with your help there. They also need more huts. Let me know. Ricky's just taking the piss. He can't even be asked to wind me up anymore. He's getting someone else to do it. <laughs> Is that what it's going to be like for the rest of the trip? Yeah. We're in the shit here. Who can we call? I've got Carl's number. Have you? Have you got to him? Honestly, I feel like the fourth emergency service. Hello? All right, it's Carl. How's it going, mate? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'm a lot happier now with this uh, caravan. It's like the glory days when you used to holiday in Wales. Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty close. This is the happiest I've been on the, doing this bucket list. I'll tell you this, mate, honestly, I have not heard you this chipper, this chirpy, possibly forever. <laughs> so, uh, you got out for me to do? We thought maybe it'd be nice for you to go and visit the Enderbelly tribe. Enderbelly tribe? They're going to teach you their painting techniques, all right? And in exchange, you get the privilege of cooking a meal for the king. The king? Oh, you're actually going to be cooking for royalty. I've never met a king before. What do I cook him? I don't know, mate. Whatever you think would express Carl Pilkington. <laughs> it's the first dinner party I've ever done this. Things. So just keep it simple, Beans. cheese. I'm going to cook him something that I'd eat at home. I don't want to try and be fancy. Oh, look at these. Even the owls going, bloody hell. <laughs> Cooking for a king tonight. He'd eat beans. But yeah, another tribe. Ah, uh, fine. They're not that different. I mean, you know, the clobber that they wear and all that, sometimes you kind of go, what are you playing at? But, take that away. They're just people, aren't they? And most people like beans. I like all this. This is good. Yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Very nice, that. Colourful. We can paint your caravan. Um, I'm not allowed to paint the caravan, though, am I? 
It's a hired, it's not my caravan. It comes yeah. off with water. Really? You can yes. wash it, yes. Mm. Yeah, if it comes off, just cos, like I say, it's not mine. But, you know, that'd be good, then. All right, yeah, let's do that. Do you need help getting up when you've got these on? Cos I imagine it's difficult getting up. <laughs> it's like having guttering on your legs. <laughs> sure you're all right? <laughs> all right, OK. Just one side, maybe. Yeah. Just a little bit at a time. Let's, you know, let's not go mad. So what... I don't understand this paint. No, that's not a paint. Countdown. Countdown? Countdown. Cow. Cow dung? Yeah. Were you using... Cow shit? Yes. No, I'm not seeing cow shit. That's lovely paint. You come over here with a bucket of shit to put my caravan here. That looks nothing like the art over there. <laughs> it's nothing like it. This is like a dirty protest. Yeah. Police. Your mum's been at it again. Shit all over number 18. <laughs> so you must also do that. You must dip in your hand there. <laughs> it stinks when you wake it up like that. Uh, keeps hitting me. Oh, hey. Is that OK? Yes, it's nice. That was nice. All the toilets I've been in since I've been here have looked like this, so I realise now it's art. Got so really well. It's flicked off. I must be cooking for a king. Got my hands in a load of shit here. Brilliant. Luke, can I go and wash my hands? <laughs> That's the king. Hello. I'm Carl. Yes. Yeah? Good one. Good one. I'm just preparing your food for you. Yes. How many people um, are you eating with tonight? These people. All these are eating as well? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, you go and do what you got to do. He's wearing a full cheetah on his back. Should give him fucking kitty cat, not beans. What's this on the floor? Nibbles, to start. Shortbread biscuits. I don't know if they've tried them. It's a new thing for them. Wiggly worms. Some crisps. In case they're sort of fitness freaks. Apples. Crisp, biscuit, fruit, wiggly worm. Quite sour. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> He's making grilled cheese Beans. sandwiches. <laughs> well, can't you just help us here? You can see I'm struggling here. I can't do this. I can't do it, Luke. Fucking hell. I've just kicked a load of shit on that. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. Meat. Meat? Yeah. I the just... man is always, if he eat, he eat with the meat. Uh, this isn't it. There is also a pudding. A pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese on toast with beans. Geldof said he fed the world. What a fucking nightmare it is. Uh, pudding. Pudding, yeah. Chocolate uh, sponge. Custard. Thank you. Quite warm. God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Yeah? I think they want another round of cake. Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. <laughs> they don't want any more. He's moved on to a plate of meat. Some woman's come out. She's had more time, though, hasn't she? Hers looks fucking brilliant compared to that shit. <sighs> Alright, mate. Look, I've sorted out for you to join a major animal conservation project. They're going to be relocating wild rhinos. 
Uh, the range is called Lee, and they train you up, give you a real wild out experience. All right, see you later. I don't get him at times. How many animals do I need to see? And I've still got to face the gorilla. What's that there? What's what animal is this? That's the dung of a blue wildebeest. It's uh Well, you don't have to pick it up. It's pretty old, <laughs> dropping. <laughs> yeah, quite old. Are you joking? Are they olives? What are you doing licking it? Just taste testing it. It's a way to determine the age of the dropping. We'll talk about that later. <sighs> what I'm doing is I'm determining the freshness of the dropping. And it can be determined just by, by the taste of it. <clears throat> But is that a last resort? That's, I mean, no, no, sure, you keep driving it's just a standard little tester. Through. You don't want to follow the wrong set of footprints, do you? So, how often a week are you licking shit? Yeah. With me. Taste it. <laughs> get your finger in there, but you can kind of get a bit of a Get your a finger in there. It, you know? Things to do before you die. <laughs> Stick your finger in all this shit. Got some? You taste it, it's a little bit sweet, I and mean, then we'll find some later on that's even fresher and oh, it won't be so like sweet. wine tasting. Kind of, I suppose, the same kind of principle. Get it. Do you know You Bet with Matthew Kelly? Do you get that over here? No. It's a programme on the telly. Say if there was piles of shit mm -hmm. and I blindfolded you and went, what's that? Would you, could you tell just by that what animal it is? <laughs> I'd give it a go. It's not a skill to be proud of. <laughs> so now we're going to head into the area where the rhinoceros has been located. Why have we got a shift there? Well, this particular rhinoceros bull is holding a territory which is full of young females that are actually, many of them are his daughters. They're the weirdest looking thing on the planet, aren't they? I mean, there's some people who think God created oh, stuff like that. Well, look at it. Would he really? Would he really design something as gormless looking as that? <laughs> and don't look at me. <laughs> We've given the rhino the injection, stressing its head yeah. on a tree, messing about with it a bit, and then they walk it over to a truck, get it on the back of a truck. Oh, fuck! Get out of this tribe because apparently I've sort of had it away with its own daughter, which isn't good. You kind of get div rhinos running around. Take it to another sort of group of rhinos. It can have it away with them. That's it, isn't it, really? I don't want to get this close to a gorilla unless this fella's here sticking an injection up its arse. I mean, we could do that, couldn't we? Knock it out, have me sat with it. I can lag it. Biggest thing, second biggest thing on the planet. Yeah, there's a fact for you if you want it to look good. What's the biggest thing? Elephant, isn't it? Second, that's us. A... It is. Don't, why do you question everything? <laughs> I know some facts. I think you've been whale watching on this series. Yep, a whale. I got a text from Suzanne. I just was saying, oh, how's it going? She's still oh, stressful. I'm moving office. I was moving a fucking rhino. All right, Carl. Um, now you're in Uganda. There is a market where they sell a lot of second-hand clothes that have been donated by charities. So uh, meet your guy. This guy called Bam, and he'll be by a white van at the entrance. <laughs> Look at it! I thought it would have quite a nice gesture if you buy up some clothes that you could take with you on the trek to see the gorillas. Alright mate, bye. Do you know a fellow called Bam? What? Bam. A, a man I'll called Bam in a, what, in a van. <laughs> you Bam? I can't. So you're welcome to Uganda. Um, <laughs> Alright. Deep in the forest, you need something like a jacket, a heavy jacket. Heavy jacket. Yeah, and uh, khaki or cordros. That's, all, that's what we're going to get. I mean, is that a priority when I'm going to see a gorilla? What pants am I going to wear? I'm going to need a pair of cords. Didn't Ricky want you to do it naked? There's no way I'm going naked. <laughs> Gorilla's in the mist. She had clothes on. 
David Attenborough. When he was rolling about with him, having a wrestle. Yeah, he's not about. <laughs> so I, I'm not doing that. So if that's if it's if it's wear the cords or not, I'll wear the cords. I don't even know why you're filming me shopping. Honestly, I sometimes think you're making a different program to me. Let's buy these. Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Uh, how much is that in pounds? One pound sixty, mate. One pound sixty for a pair of pants. Yeah. That's really good. What else have they got? <laughs> they do need a <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Great top here. Now I've always got a problem with the boiler. <laughs> Good that, innit? Oh, just ten more oh. minutes just to have a look around. <laughs> yeah, they're good then. You like it? <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. How about if I just do a swap? Let's go. Got to go, mate. Hey, look, we've got a pool table. <laughs> oh, is this really what we, we had in mind? To be honest, I didn't have in mind shopping about buying cords. Rules have changed. <laughs> oh, you like that? Got a good deal. Whoa, good deal. What else you got? <laughs> Visitors, you are welcome. You are welcome to our country, Uganda. Hey. All right, boys. I hope you didn't spend too long in the market. Um, probably should have told you got a 12-hour drive to get to the uh, impenetrable forest. Um, but I mean, it's easier than just sitting in the van, chilling out. Hard to work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, I wish you all the best luck to stay on this Gorilla Forest camp. Piss me off at times. Oh, that's nice. Have you thought about what you're going to say? To To the viewers? When oh, he's wearing his shirt. shirt. <laughs> I don't know. Just see how it goes. Why are you worrying about that? No one's going to be expecting a great speech from me anyway, are they? Everything's been said that can be said about a gorilla. Then why are we doing it? Just wanted to see one. How long's this trek? Three hours. <laughs> You're kidding me. We're walking another three hours. Not me. I'm just hoping it's, you know, <laughs> it's worth it. Oh, he's wearing all his new clothes. <laughs> Go around this closer here. I've just smelled the way it is. You can smell a gorilla's nest? Yes, we can. And he makes sure that he leaves the poop so that no one will use it anymore. Do you need to um, taste it to see how near they are? No, you don't. You can see it's fresh. <laughs> the leaves are wet. Why are you jumping straight into stick your finger in it? <laughs> getting close to gorillas. We're not though, you've been saying that. We've been going for hours. We've got to walk the same route back. Five minutes. Five minutes. How long now, Dave? Seven minutes. He said seven minutes. Less than 10 minutes to gorillas. We are getting much closer to them. Is this how you imagined it? No. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, I've not. Oh, fucking hell. No, oh, you twat. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> Honestly. Look at this. I, 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 I fucking triffid's got hold of me. Fuck's sake. Do me head in. My feet are hurting. My toes are being crushed with these boots. My socks are wet. Got a headache coming on. Uh, they have started moving towards where we passed. No, are you saying the gorillas are going back to where we started? Yes. <laughs> That's why Diane Fossey stayed with them, isn't it? She couldn't be arsed, she did the trek. And so bollocks are going back. It's easy to live with them. This is an indication that we are much close to the gorillas. This is a gorilla pool. I've seen it. <laughs> this one has been one of the wonderful tracks 
Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I may say 10 out of 10. <laughs> Like ET. That's a good one, but... That's a big one, isn't it? Shall we start with our smaller one? It's bloody massive. But how many gorillas are there in the world? We have got 720 mountain gorillas living in the whole world. 700? That's nothing, like... You could put the world's gorillas on one flight. They take up more than one seat, though. All right. You can get a lot of, if they had standing. If it wasn't taking off, and and there was no sort of rules, you could put some in business class and all the rest of it. You could get them all on it, which made me realise that that is a bit of a problem. Not that that is a problem. I mean, <laughs> Look at her nose. David should have sat down. Hello. All right. What have you been doing? Well, it was the gorillas thing today, wasn't it? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Did you see one? Yeah, saw a, saw a family of them. Bit of communication. <laughs> that must be amazing. Well, no, not really. I've got mozzie bikes on my head. Ten hours it was in total to get there and back. Really? Walking. Wow. In mud, socks wet, covered in shit. I got right. there, they wanted me to sort of give some quote as to what I was feeling like. I couldn't think of anything. We've got little ears, long arms, short legs. Is this your speech? Wow, you, you, you are just like Attenborough. That is just like Attenborough. Yeah, but it's, it, I think it's all to do with the accent. If Attenborough said that, if he went, and they've got little ears, people go, oh, that's good. <laughs> I think it's because I, I'm northern, yeah. people go, he sounds like a right dickhead. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? It's that here, nettles up my arse, trying to think of something worthy to say. I just think, at the end of the day, I tell you what, don't say anything. Sometimes you can say it best when you don't say anything at all. Ronan Keating said that. Let's, let's, let, yeah, there you go. Let's take the words of Ronan Keating here. I say it best when I say nothing at all. I don't know how to put my hands down because there's shit everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know that the trip was all about the gorillas, but I reckon I've made a lot of difference in Africa. You sorted that thing out for me to build a hut. I've done that for them. Yeah. I taught kids. Yeah. I cooked for the king and his mates. I shifted that rhino. That's another charity act. You finally did the bungee jump, which is pretty amazing, considering no, how adamant you were at the beginning, you would never do it. But that's what, that's, what, mm, that's what I was going to say, though. Because I've been doing a lot of charity work, I just want to finish this trip by uh, sort of completing it. And I'll pay the two and a half grand when I get back. And then that way, it's all part of... No, no, no. No, I don't mind. That's no, what I'm going to do. No, I want to, honestly. I want to. No, no, that, no, you did it. No, I pay it. You did the jump. You did the jump. I didn't do no. it. I didn't do the no. jump. I didn't do the jump. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't do it. I didn't do the jump. What, the bungee jump? Hmm. But what, when... How were you going to get away with it? Because I'd have seen the footage of you not jumping. No, but I got the di I got Luke, the director, to put me out on and do the jump. But his hat came off, so you can see that he's not bald, <laughs> so he didn't work. <laughs> 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 it's like one of those dumbest criminals ever. I can't even be angry with you because you are so useless. Well, we can split the two and a half grand, then. No, 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 you're paying it. You didn't do the jump. That's hilarious. 
So now, not only are you made a complete twonk of yourself and shown that you're a coward and a liar, you're two and a half down. <laughs> but, oh, that's amazing. Oh, it's my best day ever. You, you sure you saw the drillers? I'm not going to get it back and it's Luke in a fucking fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was it. An Idiot Abroad, uh, Season 2, Episode 5, Meet a Gorilla. So <laughs> Carl was out working for charity there. Uh, looked, looked like he was, you know, trying to help. He got some extra extra huts built there. He, he still didn't do the jump, though. I want him to jump so bad. Come on, Carl, jump. But he still didn't do it yet. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, we'll see you next time. We'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, next one coming up real soon, I'm sure. Uh, we're getting to the, to the end of this series too, I think. Uh, I think there's a season three too, but it's only a few, few episodes. I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it's only three. So, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and have a nice day.